So the first snowdrops are starting to appear and the first signs of spring. Um, I even saw some primroses today. Uh, so I thought it might be fun to paint some snowdrops. Um, I'm going to make them into bookmarks, but you don't have to do that. The way I've painted them, you could use them as a border for something or just do a picture. But um, this is one of the bookmarks, um, which I've laminated and added a little ribbon to. Um, and I've written a little quote on it. It's sort of optional how much of it or how little of it you do, um, but I'll show you the process. So I'm going to start out just by drawing in a kind of curved shape um, up the centre of the bookmark. just as a guide um, and then I think I'm going to just roughly mark in that I have a flower there and I'll have another flower there. I hope you can see the lines on this, it's ever so light, you don't want to go too dark because you're just making more work for yourself. And then one at the top up here. So I'm looking at my reference image and I'm going to do keeping the pencil as light as you can. So I've got the kind of the middle the middle petal of the snowdrop there and then put in two on either side. And then a little one poking out behind. That one's at the back of the flower. And then they've got their sort of green cap on them. I want to make sure that the petals come up into that cap. Which is a sort of dome shape. And the stem comes off this, and this is going to roughly kind of join up with that initial swirly line that we drew up the centre. Doesn't have to be exact, we can go back and rub things out if we need to. And looking at the reference, snowdrops usually have a little leaf that, um, or part of the stem that kind of kicks up like that. So I'm just going to come up from that stem line and just put a little bit in there. And then that's going to come back down and join up with the stem. And I'm going to rub out. that inner line so I don't get confused. And there's our first snowdrop. I'm going to, right now, if I carry that line on there, it's going to end there and it's not really going to line up properly. So I'm going to move this one so it's more like that. And then bring that down. So that the end of my snowdrop almost looks as though it's growing out of that one. Um, and then again, we need to do this 
little bit that's coming up here. Now I think this one is a bit high so I want to move it down a little bit. If you want to, you could put um, another leaf at the bottom, like a, so this, these leaves here are kind of part of the stem if you look at your references, um, but snowdrops do have leaves. So just on this bottom one, I'm just going to put a kind of slightly thicker leaf shape like that. Bit more evenly spaced. So just going to rub out any extra lines that I don't need now. There, so we've got the shape of it. So now I'm going to take my putty rubber, which is my flexible rubber and make these lines so that they're faint enough that I can just see them. So now we're ready to start painting. So I'm going to take, um, I've got a number two round tip brush, a little bit of water. Um, now I I've got paint squeezed out into my palette. Um, you might be working from a pan of watercolours similar to this. Um, it doesn't really matter what paint you're using. It doesn't have to be exactly the way I'm doing it, but I'll explain to you what, what I'm doing and what I'm using. Um, so I'm going to start off with the petals. And I find when painting something white, my favourite colour to use is Payne's Grey. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of water and a little bit of Payne's Grey on my palette. And the trick with watercolour is to start off light because you can build up um, layers of colour to make it darker. But once you've gone dark, you can't then go back again. Um, and then just where the dark areas of the snowdrop are, just paint on a tiny bit, then wet my brush, um, dab off some of the excess water on there and then just work that paint that I've put on so that we've got a dark area and a light area. So I don't know if you can see that it's a bit darker at the top and a bit lighter in the middle. And if you've gone too dark, you can put a bit of water on your brush and then put some oh, rip that off. Put some water on the area where you've gone too dark and then with a little kitchen roll just dab it off. And then I'm going to let that one dry, that petal, inside petal dry, before I do the outside one. So I'll move on to um, one of these petals. Another way you might like to do it is just get your, your brush with some water on it and wet the whole petal. just that one petal and then pick up some of your paint and just drop it on in the areas 
where it's darkest so it's darkest kind of at the top and then a bit at the tip there as well and then I like to just dry my brush off a bit and then just work that in a bit Um, while it's still wet, if you want to, you can take a tiny bit of your sap green and just drop a little bit on the tip of the, of the petal because sometimes snowdrops do have that little green tip. And again, again, let that middle one dry before I do the two outer ones, so I'll move down to the bottom one. The watercolour dries pretty quickly, so I can probably go back up to that top one. Just take a, you see how light that Payne's Grey is, there's hardly any pigment in there. Now this petal here is behind this one, so it's going to be darker down this edge. And it's sort of poking out and the light's catching it there. And because that petal isn't touching that one, we can do that one now as well. I'm going to leave that back pedal, pe pedal, petal for the moment though because these two are wet. Um, if you feel like it's too light at the moment don't worry because we're going to build up more layers on top. So this is just getting the first bit of colour on. Now I'm going to go back up and do, oh I haven't done the green tips have I? Let's put some green tips on. So again just a, a hint of green on the tips of those petals. We can always make it darker if we want to. And then you can go a bit darker if you want with these little petals that are at the back of the flower because they're in the shadow the most. But again it's always better to go lighter and then make it darker later if you want to. So now we'll move on to the first layer paint on the green, the leaves. So with the green the same applies about going lighter and making it darker later if you want to. Um, so I'm going to put a bit of sap green on my palette and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of olive green as well. And then really water it down. Um, so you want your brush damp but not absolutely sodden and then pick up a bit of paint and the same way I did on the leaves I'm going to go on the darker areas leaving a bit of white paper there 
and then wash my brush, take off the excess water and then just work that, that edge so we don't have a definite line between the white of the paper and the um, paint. Don't worry if your lines, your edges look a little bit fuzzy at this point because we, as we go round and um, paint on darker layers, we'll we'll sharpen them up a bit. So the same on this leaf. So because this one is underneath these, it's going to be a bit darker in here. to leave a sort of white area in the middle there. Just soften that line. So I'm going to work my way down the others doing the same as I have with that one. So that's the first layers of colour on. I'm going to let that dry completely before we move on to the next layer. So now we've got our first layers on, um, I'm going to go over and be a little bit bolder with it. So a bit more Payne's Grey and really just kind of do the same again, darken up the dark areas but try and keep the, the light areas um, white. Try, if you can, to use your brush strokes to kind of suggest veins in the petal. So if you can see, I'm sort of pulling my brush down like that. So it's creating subtle lines. Um, and the same principle applies because I've worked on that petal now. I'm going to leave it, leave that to dry before I work on those two. So I'll move onto this one. Um, so I'm going to carry on with a bit of the green while that Payne's Grey is drying. So it's the sap green. And the olive green. And I'm just not going to dilute it quite as much with the water as I did for that first coat. And then just gently over those darker areas. And then use the brush to kind of rub away any hard lines. So again, going dark where the, the stems or the leaves are behind another one, that's where you go darker. 
And again with the leaves, I'm using the brush strokes to suggest the shape and the veins in that, that leaf, that stem. And if we wanted now we could go back to that first petal is dry so we can go back in wash your brush dry it off and then you can use that sort of sweeping motion to suggest a few little veins in the petal. It's going to kind of be a bit darker at the top here where it's just under this little green cap. I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. So I'm going to work my way over the rest of it with this darker layer. And I'm going to go and make those little petals at the back a bit darker. So some tiny little strokes in there and then again just softening. And I'm going to put a tiny bit more green on the tips of each flower and again just use the, the directional strokes but um, teeny weeny ones so I'm going to start using my liner brush um, so the liner brush has got a longer, this is the uh, round tipped one I was using before um, and you can see it's got longer bristles um, and it goes into a much finer point than this one. You don't need to use one of these, you can just use a smaller version of a, a round headed brush. So this is a number two, you could go for a number one or a zero. Um, have a play around on a scrap piece of paper and see what works for you but this is the one that I'm going to use. So I'm going to start out on the um, petals just a little bit of Payne's Grey not quite as watered down as we did on the other layers and then just keeping the lines really fine so it's almost like an outline But I'm not going to kind of outline everything exactly. See, there's a bit of a gap there. So just some very fine lines around the edges of the petals and then I'm going to put some fine lines inside the petal as well just to, a few lines down over the white area just to make it look as though the petal is curving. <laughs> 
and then where it's darker you can put a few lines there so you can use these lines to kind of shade and to give a suggestion of shape and that little one behind just put a few darker lines in there so the contrast between that back petal and this front petal is more um, and just pick out where the sort of green cap is It'd be a bit darker up there just put a few more fine lines in there so hopefully you can see the difference that that's made so it's a tiny amount of paint and um, but if you compare that flower to that one suddenly it's got a bit more life to it So I'm going to mix up some green colour. Um, I'm not going to use my fine brush for mixing the colour because I like my brushes to last as long as possible. Um, so I'm using just any other brush which is a bit bigger. And I'm going to put the same green mixture that we used um, on the stems and the leaves. I'm going to add a bit of Payne's Grey to it as well, just to darken it up a bit. So I tend to mix up a big blob like that on my palette. And then get some Payne's Grey, and I just mix it in on one side, so I've got control as to how much of that I add. And then using my fine liner brush, go in and do the green areas. So the same way that I did with the petals, I'm going to do a little bit of an outline but not a solid line all the way around. So you can break the line up. And then the areas which are darker, just going to put some little strokes in like that. Where this one goes, this stem goes behind that leaf. I'm just going to darken that up. And then again where this one, this bit here is behind these two, just emphasise that a bit more. And add a bit of an outline. And then I'm going to use the brush to suggest some veins going up into the leaf. So just some long strokes like that. And some coming down that way. Maybe one or two in the middle of the paler area just to make it look as though that's got that leaf has got veins in it so again hopefully you can see the difference just adding that small amount of darker paint has made so that, that snowdrop is complete um, and you can see the difference between that green there and that so I'm going to carry on and do the others <laughs> 
So you might decide you like it like that and you could leave it like that. Um, I quite like having a sort of mottled watercolory background on it so I'm going to go ahead and add one of those. So for the background I'm going to use, um, I have these some of these Chinese brushes that I like. Um, you don't have to use one of these but I would suggest that you go for a bigger round-headed brush um, for this because you need to move relatively quickly with it and get quite a lot of water on. Um, these I just buy in a sort of multi-pack, they're quite cheap from Amazon. Um, let me know if you'd like a link and I will find it for you. Uh, so I'm going to go for a kind of bluey wash on the background so um, use whichever blues you like but I want something fairly bright so I've got a um, sort of cerulean blue here but I think it's going to be too bright on its own so mix up a decent amount of it on your palette and carefully you don't splash it over onto your, your painting as you're doing that. So make a nice big puddle of colour. You don't really want to be remixing it halfway through. But I think that's too bright so I'm going to add some of my trusty Payne's Grey to it. Um, and we could try it on a little scrap of paper just to see. I quite like that. So then I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to wet the background but without getting the, um, the snowdrops wet. So a bit of water on my brush, clear water and just paint it on. Don't worry about going right up to the edge, we can do that in a minute when we've got some colour on it. But um, go fairly close. So you want a nice wet background. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I think that the top bit will have dried by the time I get down to the bottom. But I'm certainly going to go around here. So I've kind of done that first snowdrop. And then pick up a bit of colour on your brush and dot it onto the um, onto the wet paper. And then you can use the fine tip of your brush just to push it up to the edges doesn't have to go exactly it's part of the joy of watercolor is the kind of the way it flows and moves and I'm going to try and leave that um, that effect sort of cloudy mottled effect and I'm just going to if you think you've got a bit too much on your brush you can wipe off the excess and then just use the point of that brush just to get it right up into all the corners and the edges. So you can brush a bit and dot a bit. And then it will just sort of spread out into the water. Occasionally wash your brush and just make sure that the next bit you're going to is still wet. So you can add a bit more water there. Um, and you would want to try and avoid getting a drying line there. So I'm going to add a bit more water there and start to put the first bit of water in here. And then a bit of colour on my brush. Just dot it on, dot a bit in there, a bit down there, and then using my the point of my brush, just work up into those edges. 
move that around a bit if you want to. If you want, you can take a bit of water on your brush, clean water, and just drip it on. And it will sort of make a spreading effect and it'll give you an even more mottled effect. And carry on working your way down the whole piece. I like to leave an area around the edge. Um, that's just personal preference. I quite like it, having that sort of raggedy watercolour edge. So this is now completely dry. Um, you can see where it's gone a little bit kind of fluffy around the edges. So I'm going to go back in um, with my um, my liner brush, my very fine brush, and tidy up those edges a bit. So I'm going to use the same um, colours that I used when I was doing the sort of slight outline before. So I'm going to start on the snowdrops with a bit of the Payne's grey and just very carefully just tidy up those lines a little bit. And I'm going to do the same with the green mixture with the Payne's Grey mixed in. The darker green. Just a few little lines here and there. And there we go, that's the painting finished. So this is one that I did before, um, as you can see they're all going to vary slightly, um, but I put some a quote up the side so it says, no matter how long the winter, spring is sure to follow. Um, so I penciled it in very lightly first of all and then went over it with a waterproof fine liner um, like that. Um, I also clipped off the edges, this is going to be a bookmark, uh, so I have this little corner cutter tool, I don't technically know what it's called, um, but you pop it in like that and clip down the edges. So what I'm going to do is just make a few of them because I've got a little bit more scrap watercolour paper and then I think I'll laminate them. Um, ready to be bookmarks. So there we go, those are my finished bookmarks. Um, I've run them through the laminator, I didn't bother showing you that bit, um, and punched a hole. I used my little corner clippy thing on the corners. Um, and those will, they're just nice little freebies to go out with the next orders that I receive. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, any questions, leave a comment um, and I'll see you next time.